In this video, we talk about list line as a one technology. We will start off with list line introduction, then its physical characteristics and real world implementation. After that, we talk about data link protocols for list line and IP routing over list line one. Finally, we sum up our video with the keynotes. Let's get into the introduction. The reason it is called list line because the company using the list line does not own the line but paying a monthly fee to use this. Sometimes it is called list circuit because it refers to the electrical circuit between two endpoints. As network engineers, we usually call it serial link because Router uses serial interface for this type of connection and the bits flow serially. We usually call it point to point because this connection allows to connect only two endpoints together. In US, we usually call it T1 because it transmits data at specific speed of 1.5 megabit per second. We usually call it one link because it is usually used to connect devices in a one of an enterprise. It is a private link because data sent over the line cannot be copied by other customers. This is the inside of a list line. As you can see, it uses two pairs of wires. One pair for sending and the other pair for receiving data. List line sending and receiving bits in both directions at a specific speed so it operates in full duplex mode and it can transmit the data at the distance up to 1000 miles. It is a point to point link which means the bits can only flow serially from one end to the other end of the link. Therefore, the physical address of the link is not important. Let's look into the implementation of a list line network. First of all, the service provider has to install their switches at most of the major buildings in a city. They call those buildings their central offices. Then they started to build the connections to connect those switches Finally, they have to configure the switches to make it a large, complex list line network. When it finishes, they are ready to sell. For example, they sell it to Bank of America. As you can see, Bank of America shares the same offices with the central offices of the service provider. So all they need to do is to connect to the routers of Bank of America at both locations and Bank of America is ready to use the list line. However, when they sell it to Cisco Skill to connect the main office to the branch office, as you can see at both locations of Cisco Skill, there's no switches. So the service provider has to build the connection from this central office to the main office of Cisco Skill and build another connection from this central office to the branch office of Cisco Skill. Cisco Skill now can plug in their routers and start using the list line. As you can see, to the service provider, it is a large, complex list line network, but to the end user, it's just a simple point-to-point -point connection. Let's move on to data link protocols for list line. As you know, there have been many data link protocols developed for list line. However, the two most popular protocols nowadays are PPP point-to-point -point protocol and HDLC high-level data link control protocol. Let's look into the detailed fields for 
Cisco HDLC frame. Cisco HDLC frame has six fields. The first field is a flux field. It is an 8-bit sequence with this pattern that marks the beginning and the end of the frame. The address field is a link physical address of the destination device. However, this is a point-to-point -point link, so the address field is not so important. The control field has flow and error control information between the two routers. The type or protocol field. This is a special field for Cisco HDLC frame. In another word, it only exists in Cisco HDLC frame. It is used to identify the type of the packet in the data field. The data field carries the layer 3 packet. The last field is FCS or frame check sequence. It identifies if the frame has any errors. Let's see how IP routing works in a least line 1. In this example, we will use this network diagram and from PC1, we ping the IP address of server 1. And here is the packet capture. As you can see, at the transport layer, it is the Internet Control Message Protocol or ICMP. At the network layer, it is IP version 4. And the source IP is the IP address of PC1. And the destination IP is the IP address of server 1. In order to send the message to server 1, the network layer of PC1 determines that the IP address of server 1 is in a different subnet, so it has to send the message to its default gateway with the IP 10.0.1.10. In this example, let's assume PC1 doesn't have the information for the MAC address of its default gateway. So at the layer 2 or data link layer, it has to use the app protocol to find the MAC address of the default gateway and it found the MAC address of the interface F00. So the source MAC address is the MAC address of PC1 and the destination MAC address is the MAC address of the interface F00 on router 1. Then it sends the entire frame which include 98 bytes on the Y to router 1. Upon receiving the Ethernet frame, router 1 performs the following actions. First, it de-encapsulates the IP packet from the Ethernet frame. Next, it reads the IP packet and searches in its routing table to find the route containing the destination IP, which is the IP address of server 1. Assume it found the route with the instruction to forward the packet out via the interface S11 to the next hop with the IP 10.0.0.2. After that, it encapsulates the IP packet into a new HDLC frame, then forward to router 2. And here is the message. As you can see, the information in transport layer and network layer stay the same. However, they are now encapsulated into a new Cisco HDLC frame and the protocol field is a special field added by Cisco to the HDLC frame. It is used to identify the layer 3 package and in this case it is the IP version 4 packet. The standard HDLC frame does not have this field and sometimes this field is called the type field. 
like router 1, router 2 performs the following actions to process the HDLC frame. First, it de-encapsulates the IP packet from the HDLC frame. It repeats the same process as router 1 and finds the destination IP, which is the IP address of server 1, attaches to its interface F00. After that, it encapsulates the IP packet into a new Ethernet frame, then forwards the frame to server 1 for consuming the data, which ends the routing process. And here is the message. As you can see, the transport layer and the network layer stay the same, but they are encapsulated into an Ethernet frame with the saw MAC address is the MAC address of interface F00 on router 2 and the destination MAC address is the MAC address of server 1. Let's sum up our video with the keynotes. A list line provides a layer 1 service to connect only two endpoints at the distance up to 1000 miles. It uses two pair of wires to transfer data in full duplex mode, which means one pair for sending data and the other pair for receiving data. It warranties to deliver bits at a specific speed between the two devices. Data sent over a list line is private because it cannot be copied by other customers. The two data link protocols used for list line are PPP, point to point protocol, HDLC, high level data link control protocol. Cisco added the type or protocol field into the standard HDLC frame to identify what has been encapsulated within that frame. Only the data link layer addresses get changed during the transmission across multiple types of physical links. This is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching.